I'm trying out a new to me product on a piece of furniture that is probably the worst I've ever worked on. <laughs> yeah, it's the worst I've ever worked on. So the product that I'm using today is Real Milk Paint and this is honestly the perfect product for this piece because it has termite damage. I wanted to be able to fill the termite damage while still showcasing the wood grain. It is just a stunner. Normally I would just wood fill any small veneer repairs, but this thing had a lot of really bad moisture damage trapped underneath the veneer. And this is why most of it was pulling up super easily. While it would have been super awesome to restore this burl wood veneer, it just wasn't even an option because I was missing a quarter of the front panel. So I said my goodbyes and carried on. So the house that this furniture was left in actually had some pretty bad roof damage, which is why this furniture has so much moisture trapped underneath the veneer. After removing that first little section of veneer, I was pretty hopeful for the wood underneath it, but I was soon to be disappointed by a bunch of tiny little holes that I didn't know what were at the time. So I was completely unfazed until I googled it later that night and kind of went into panic mode because I was already committed to this project. So it turns out that these were in fact termite holes but we'll get to that later because it's totally a fixable problem. I was able to pry most of this veneer off by just using this plastic putty knife and kind of hammering it underneath. Once I got the hang of this technique, I was actually able to get one of the side panels completely off in one go. Now, of course, there always has to be a little bit of stubborn veneer, but the easiest trick to get this off is to simply lay a wet t-shirt or rag over the top of it and then heat it up with an iron. This is going to help loosen up that glue underneath, and you might have to repeat the process a couple times. This piece was super dirty, so I went ahead and cleaned it before sanding so I didn't gunk up all my sandpaper. Since most of this piece was already down to bare wood, I went ahead and stripped the rest of the exterior to match. If it's solid wood, I'll typically start with 80 grit sandpaper and then work my way up to 220. In this case, the finish was coming off really easy, so I just sanded with 220. I use my random orbital sander for the bulk of large flat surfaces and for any tight corners I grab the detail mouse sander. Sanding is super loud and time consuming so I usually will grab my noise cancelling headphones and just listen to music or a podcast. Whenever you have cabinet doors and hardware, it's always best to just go ahead and take it apart. I promise you it's going to save time in the long run. I find it super annoying trying to work around glass and tape it off. Plus, that's not what a professional cabinet refinisher would do.
I'm using this wood filler because I know it works well with the real milk paint and I want to make sure that it adheres. I liked the performance of this stuff, it dried a lot faster than the wood filler I normally use. The wood on this door frame was cracking so I just put some wood glue and clamped it together. I sanded the wood filler down with 220 grit until it was completely flush. When you run your hand across it, you don't want to feel any differences in the wood because it will show up once you paint. To scuff sand my curved surfaces on this piece, I like to grab my foam abrasives from Surf Prep and it contours to the surface really nice. I love this sander, but it's pretty expensive, so if you're a beginner, you can still buy these foam pads on the Surf Prep website to fit whatever sander you already have. Now those foam sanding pads are great for scuff sanding curved surfaces, but if you want to strip them, I have a little hack for you. These foam contour blocks are meant for hand detail sanding, but they have a velcro back, so I just stick it right onto my detail sander. Now I haven't tried this on an orbital sander, but I'm pretty sure it won't work because it'll be too hard to hold it in place. Now there's just a lot of detail going on with these legs, so I grabbed my chemical stripper to go ahead and strip it down and match it to the body. Rinsing this stuff off gets really messy, so I always lay down one of these little dollar store sheets. To remove the chemical stripper, I just grab a firm bristle brush and some water. I think Mineral Spirits works best for this, but it gets really expensive. I find it easier to just remove and reattach all these details instead of trying to sand in little nooks and crannies. Now that I'm completely down to bare wood, I'm going to treat for termites. I've had this piece of furniture for months and there's been no termites in sight, but for peace of mind, this Boracare product will kill any that are in it and prevent future ones from coming. My uncle is a professional in pest control and he told me to just mix up a 1 to 1 ratio of this product with warm water. I applied this product to every single surface that I could. I genuinely think that this was probably unnecessary and this product cost me $90. But again, I think the peace of mind is worth it and I have more furniture from that house that might also have termite damage. So that gallon's gonna go a long way. Okay, really quick, I wanna talk about this Boracare stuff. So I let this sit for 48 hours and I came back to sand it and it was sticky. So my initial thought was, leave it longer but I read online that it's okay if you clean and sand it because the bore care penetrates into the wood it'll still be treated so I took a bucket and some Dawn dish soap and I just went over the whole entire piece and cleaned it and now that it's dry it's sanding really great there's no sticky residue and should be good to paint after this this video is sponsored by The Real Milk Paint, which I'm super excited to be using for the first time. This is unlike other paints because it's environmentally friendly and it comes in a powder form. I appreciate this because you can mix up just what you need and then not have to worry about it freezing in the winter. I mixed up a 1 to 1 ratio because I want full coverage to cover up that termite damage, but I think this would also look really pretty in a wash.
Milk paint works best over raw wood, so since I didn't strip the interior of this piece, I'm going to use Ultra Bond to make sure it adheres. I always hear how nice this product looks over raw wood, and man, it did not disappoint. I started out using my angled zebra brush and then I switched over to the round zebra brush. The round brush just holds so much product and is so good for painting curves. I expected the Ultra Bond to thin the first coat out a lot, but it actually had really nice coverage. I think my favorite feature of this paint is how fast it dries because by the time I was done applying the first coat of paint, it was already dry and ready for the second coat. I always lightly hand sand with 400 grit sandpaper in between coats of paint so that it's nice and smooth to the touch and it eliminates any brush strokes. I had pretty good coverage with three coats of paint, but in total I decided to go with four coats to make sure that my wood fill was completely covered. To reattach all my pretty little details, I just used some wood glue and then some brad nails. I should have reattached this section with brad nails and glue before I painted because I ended up damaging it and having to repaint this section again anyways. Now that we're ready to seal this piece, I've had my eye on this warm black wax for quite a while ever since seeing some inspiration pictures on the Real Milk Paint website. I applied it using a wax brush and then wiped off the excess with a rag. This product absorbs into the milk paint bringing out the most beautiful depth and sheen. There's really no right or wrong way to do this, which is why this product is really good for beginners. If you're not careful, sealing dark paint with other products can result in a streaky and unprofessional looking finish. So this wax finish is actually permanent and it won't wipe off with cleaning products when it's dry. And that's really important to me because I sell my furniture. I want my furniture to last a long time and not require my customers to have to do a lot of maintenance on it.
I think this hardware is very timeless and fits the style of the piece, but it needs a major cleaning. I've already gotten one comment about how I should have left the original patina, but in my opinion, this is just unsanitary. I scrubbed all that gunk off with Barkeeper's Friend and my wire brush, and I was left with this beautiful brass finish. The drawer track had been grinded down by a nail on the drawer, so I went ahead and just flipped it over. I use this clear soft wax to both hydrate and seal the interior of my piece. I apply this literally everywhere that wood touches wood on the drawer and it'll make it slide so much smoother. I don't normally seal the backs of my pieces, but since I applied that termite treatment, I wanted to kind of seal it in there. The trim that was holding the glass on previously had rusty nail holes, so I decided to move them and add new nails. I was really nervous I was going to drop the glass here right at the end. The brass was looking a little too shiny and bright against that dark finish, so I grabbed some Spanish copper rub and buff to polish it up. I felt like something was missing here at the end, so I decided to add some light distressing to highlight the details. If I had known I was going to do this, I would have done it before waxing the piece because it was pretty tough to break through that finish. To add a little bit more of an aged look, I added some more black wax along all of the edges. Now finally I had my followers over on Facebook help me stage this piece live. Picking out the decor items was so much fun and I hope you'll join me next time. Had I refinished this piece of furniture a year ago, I might have knocked the details off and tried to modernize this. And I'm so glad I didn't. absolutely in love with the way the milk paint turned out. I think it looks just so velvety and soft and high end. It dried so quickly, making the project really fast. And then the black wax just really brought everything to life. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get rid of this one. I 
I'm not sure if I'm gonna sell this piece yet. I've got some feedback from my other videos that you guys want to see profit breakdown. So I'll be doing some of those videos in the future. As for right now, this piece, it's a tricky situation being that it had termite damage. I know it doesn't have termites anymore, but it's kind of, it's just a touchy subject. I don't know if I wanna sell it or if I wanna keep it. I probably would list it for $800 and just see what happens. Um, I've sold similar pieces for $750, but I think this one has a lot more character. It's really beautiful. I'm proud of this one. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already hit that subscribe button, please do and comment and let me know what type of finishes you'd like to see next.